Well, it's October 10th in northern Wisconsin. And it's about, oh, upper 60 degrees Fahrenheit. But very likely the last chance I'm going to get out on the water. So, we're going to go up on the... Um, St. Louis River Estuary that flows into Lake Superior on the western edge. See, so you got to get the mizzen on, and we're about ready to go. I'm not sure if I've shown folks this, but I think this works really nice. I um, use these oh mid-range little uh, carabiners to keep my battens in, and um, they also when I'm um, Taking the sail down, I have to take these top two out in order to roll this up. So they they conveniently keep the battens secure off the sail, and so I don't lose them, which is nice. I really like my two-pole Honda. The only time it's let me down is when I've screwed up by uh, not tipping it up, or excuse me, not shutting the gas off when I raise it and tip it forward. It will flood if you do that, but other than that, I have never had any issues with getting this thing started. We're going to just motor out of this little bay, get out into the wind. Um, I want to go upwind, um, and I may, depending on conditions and the wind's direction, do a little motoring so I can get farther upriver than I normally would or I have time to do today if I just sail. Just want to explore some new area. Looks like we'll find some wind out here. Looks like we'll be moving along at... Three and a half to five knots. There's some uh, puffs coming across the bay from over here. And I'm heading up to that corner up around that island. There's another open area up there called Spirit Lake. Oh, the colors are beautiful. And if the wind keeps up, it's gonna be a gorgeous day out. Yeah, a lot of dark water right here and white caps. Sail up, and uh, yeah, there's quite a bit more wind. Okay, hold on, I'll be right back. Of course, I'm gonna lose my hat on the last day out. Eh, it's fall, it's all right. So, it's gonna keep blowing here. Let's see what else happens. Whee!
about five knots. Double reef. Jib flying nice. And pointing pretty good. Looks good. When I have the jib out, I uh, can pull the mizzen in a little more. I find to get, uh, so I don't stall the boat, if I have the jib rolled up, I have to ease that mizzen to keep from, and it slows me down a little bit, wants to turn up a little bit too much, which makes sense. All right, so we're trying to get up around that corner still. Beautiful hills that surround Duluth area. Rise about 600 feet above the lake. Gorgeous this time of year. A little bit of a slow crawl typically up this channel. Uh, this is the St. Louis River. There's a little bit of current coming down that I'm fighting. And uh, it's uh, shallower, or it's narrower than it looks in terms of sailing because it does get shallow outside the channel. So I can't go all the way up to shore. So I rarely do this, but I am going to motor sail for a bit. Um, there's an area up here that I don't typically make it up to. And I've got, oh, two, three hours before i got to be back. So I'm going to give myself some time. And so we're going to cheat for a little bit. And check out something new. Put my depth finder to work here. There's an eagle's nest right up there. Don't know if it's active or not this year, but I'm in about, oh, I don't know, that much water. Foot of water, maybe. And I'm just gonna push right up on this shore if I don't do something about that. So we're gonna try to tack and get out a little bit. Yep, don't have enough board down, so we'll try to scoot past it into some deeper straight ahead. This island out here is called Spirit Island. This uh, land up here used to be, um, it was a, historically a trading and traveling spot for the Ojibwe Indian who lived in the area. We're back at it. A little bit more open, a little bit more wave action again. The wind's continuing to blow nice. This bay up over here to the right was a super fun site since the 80s. And they just now are have opened it up as, to the public again. I want to head over there. They've added trails and there's a nice little point you can walk out into. Bay. and they're going to add um, some lights and some other amenities, benches I assume, but not quite there yet. And now for real I'm going to take those reefs out. I think it's time. 40 seconds to blow that reef. Well under sail. camera and uh, sail at the same time occasionally. All right. So a lot of the land over here is public land owned by the city, but there are a few private homes over on this side of the lake and uh, some deadheads. They're like right that one. 
probably want to avoid. I'm going to tuck in back here. Uh, the channel is goes right along the shore, and then there is, um, oh, there's a string of really shallow, sucky, half, barely under the water stuff that you have to be aware of. So I'm going to head back down that way in a little bit, but I'm going to be curious about what's back here. I haven't been over here. Looks like there may be a little stream that runs out the back side of this bay. So we're going to head back home here in a second, and this wind should be behind. Now I want those big puffs, because it'll be a fun ride home as soon as I get up around the corner here. So we're going to run down along this shore. It drops off pretty quickly. I think I'm going to go up and throw the whisker pole out here in a second. And here we go. A little wing on wing action for a while. Kicking along at four and a half to five and a half knots in these breezes. Woo. Feels nice. Pretty flat water here. If you look over here to my left, it gets really shallow, but it's a good six feet deep over here. And with the wind behind us, we'll be able to scoot right down through this little narrow area. Some spots in here where it gets 10 or 11 feet deep. Canadian geese gathering, getting ready to fly south. See where this little cleft is up there where the dark shadows are in that we can keep it in the picture. The channel dodges to the right there. We're gonna follow that through. Nice little narrow passage around an island and back out into the uh, main part of the river. On our way home. I think I was wrong. I thought it was up there, but it's over here around this corner. There is a little slot around. There's a small island. There's a couple of islands here. And there is a spot you can get in between two of the smaller islands. There's about three inches of water that goes through, four inches, five inches. And if you scooter up just right, you can just, in this wind's bond your back, that's kind of fun. But I think this is where I need to go. Though I could be wrong. Let's find out. All right, I guess we're going here.
I love it when the wind's behind you and you're sailing into what looks like it could be a dead end. But I do know this is not. So, as much as it kind of looks like it could be. Now I just hope the wind doesn't get blocked too much and we have enough power to get through here. Here we go. I could just sit back here for a while and not even worry about it. There's any water in here, but boards up. Just gotta watch for deadheads. Came from back there. Up around the corner here and back to home. So as I'm heading towards home here, right up this way, I've been sailing for the last 15 minutes or so on a beam reach. Let's see, here's the wind. Dead on the beam, sails are out. And she still just perfectly balances. I don't have the... Um, I don't have that locked down. And again, I'm just uh, amazed at how well this boat balances. I can shift my weight just a little bit and, and make some fine tune adjustments, but I've come across uh, half a mile of bay without touching it with uh, winds on the beam. Beautiful evening. I think I've said that already in this video.